Hi there, I'm David Monier Williams, the author of VIP Breakthrough Coaching. Today, we're going to discuss and demonstrate self-concept. So, what is self-concept? Self-concept is really nothing more than how we think about ourselves at the deepest level. It's made up of values which lead to beliefs and our underlying identity of who we are at the deepest level without all this nonsense. Values are generalizations of important experiences that we've had in our lives that lead to beliefs, but also have underlying the ethics and morals of our lives. And they come in two varieties, the secular humanist atheist and the spiritual religious, the former with relative morals and the latter with absolute. I won't get into the details at this point, it's not important. But with these values installed, we now have purpose and fulfillment in our lives. The problem comes is that our values are not our own in most cases. They come from our family, they come from our siblings, our church, our society, our culture, our government, and even the company that you work for. So it's important to have one's own values. And today, using my client Marcus, we're going to get into his unique values, which when installed into his self-concept and where they become him, also with that comes a permanent installation of motivation. You never have to have motivation again. It is always with you. This is the most important piece of your life. It is a game changer. And everybody is entitled to their own unique self-concept. All you have to do is send me a message on LinkedIn. We'll have a little Zoom conversation and come up with the program for you especially so you can operate at maximum potential with your own built-in motivation in your self-concept. Hi, Marcus. Hi, David. Let's see how I can help you install your self-concept. Yeah, I'm very curious because what you said sounds extremely promising. Yeah. So the five contexts that we're going to use our career, social, family life, uh, health, and spiritual and religious. These are the contexts which you carry with you at all times and by selecting the appropriate one for the particular event that you're in or circumstance that you're in, you can fully apply all the values and the motivation at that particular point in time. So today, in terms of career, what is your goal? What do you want? In all honesty, um, for me, career-wise, I really want to be in charge. Is it more to be in charge or could it be something else? Meaning having the ability to go where you want, do what you want? Yeah, in the end, you know, being in charge for me literally means being able to do what I want to do or to leave what I want to leave, which includes my time, includes my resources. For me, it's literally like career. Career basically symbolizes for me freedom, which is being in charge. Okay, freedom, financial freedom? As well as, yeah. As so, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not the um, employed manager anymore. So if I say in charge, it is literally I am in charge. <laughs> So the next question really is to make sure that we, that I, but more importantly, you understand what that means. So how would you know when you are in charge? What would you be seeing, hearing, and feeling differently than you are now that lets you know that you're in charge? 
the sentiment I would definitely feel is calmness because, you know, if you are driven or if you are controlled by somebody else, it usually leaves this stressful feeling. And I just know how it feels when I'm in charge because I'm in calm. Self-confidence kicks in. Self-awareness is heightened. Imagine it's almost like all the crap that usually comes from outside starts to seize away. And as I said, calm is coming in the end. But that's an internal. So what would you see that is different? You mean in the outer world? I beg your pardon? In the outer world, you mean outside? Yes. How would you know uh, that you... Yeah, basically what I can tell you is um, I'm definitely in charge if I look at my calendar and I can say, yes, I've actually booked this, booked this, booked this, booked this, booked this. Okay, this is a an appointment that's coming from outside, but the ratio, let's say, would be like two to 10. So that's one sign of being in charge. And the other one is being able to do what I feel is what I want to do, what I stand for, what makes me me in terms of um, choosing the clients I want to work with, you know, which of course shows in terms of uh, financial power, because when you can work with the client who you want to work with, it's usually a different price segment than if you have to take who just comes. Yes, of course. Absolutely. The whole thing is literally I am able to say no when I want to say no, and I can say yes when I want to say yes. That's, as you know me, this is for me being in charge, literally. Yes, so it's it's also having choice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Good. And that sounds like a a good reason for, for what you want. So what's important for you being in charge? For me, it's definitely um, being independent. Okay. What's important about being independent? You know, if I look at being in charge and choice, as you as you mentioned, I probably would put choice even before I put meaning. So being in charge gives me choice, as you said it, and choice gives me meaning. And I would say what meaning gives me is independence, but it's not the most thing. I would say it actually gives me worth. And... What's important about uh, worth? The one thing which I always strived in life was meaning. You know, that my, my life has meaning, that my life matters. And I believe it's only possible if I'm in charge, if I take the choice, if I am independent, if my life has value, which is worth for me. And, uh, and that definitely comes into the, the realm of meaning. Like okay. my life has meaning. What I'm doing has meaning, and that's only possible by exercising choice and exercising independence. Okay, so what's important about meaning? It comes down to that my life mattered. Because as you know, this is something which is very important for me to do something which really has a transformative character um, in this world. Like whether I work with corporations or I work with uh, private people, for me, it's always the transformative character uh, I would not waste time with an informative session, for example, or an informative uh, webinar that would bore me. So again, what's important about meaning? Or should I say, look, let's say what's important about worth? What is ultimately important in your life? Yeah, I would say that the, the one thing, you know, like if I if I look at being in charge, took notes here while while I spoke, having choice, then independence, worth, meaning. It definitely comes down to, to love in the end. Yes. You know, yeah. as we have worked through the, the first part already of your uh, therapy program, love was something which always ended up to be the ultimate uh, value. Yeah. And which I wholeheartedly can say, if I wouldn't have love, for myself, love for people, love for the world, I don't think I would do, and I don't think I would be able to do what I'm doing. So at this point, we've established that you have as values, independence, choice, life, uh, life's meaning, worth, and love. Now, the problem is that for most people, they don't have an order in which they put it, and we need to establish an order. So one way that I do it is quite easy for you is merely to ask a question as to which you would like more than another. But I also know that you have in your own mind probably pre-established most of these in the order that you feel is important. 
Am I right? When I look at the list now, uh, I pretty much see it and I'd like to share it with you and see what you think. Yeah. Let me just uh, go through what I would do normally for somebody who doesn't have that ability. I would ask, for instance, in terms of the first two of choice and independence, which one they would, if they can only have one, which one would they have? And more obviously, you would probably say independence. Yeah. Then I would go down to the next one on the list and keep asking the same question until you've gone through all the values, at which point you would know where independence stood in terms of the rest of them. And by repeating that, we can establish the hierarchical order in the rest of the values. So from your perspective now, what do you think is your order of okay. the values that you have given? So out of those six, the first one is definitely love. Yeah. The second one, as we just mentioned, David, is independence. Right. The third one is choice. The fourth one is worth. The fifth one is meaning, which leaves the sixth one being in charge. Yeah, but that last one actually is your goal. But at the same time, I just realized without love, without having the independence, without having choice, without having worth, without having meaning in charge. Yeah, but what I'm asking really is with the goal of being in charge, what is the hierarchy of your values that leads you to that? So what you've said is that all those values leads you to being in charge, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Okay, so being in charge is not a value, it is the goal. Right. So you have five values, love, independence, choice, worth, and the life's meaning. Makes sense, yeah. Okay, I see. good. Yeah, I agree. So let me explain something to the audience, because here, for some people, they will have something that they would classify as resistance. And the resistance uh, comes in the form of limiting beliefs of I'm not worthy or I don't deserve or I'm too old or I'm not smart enough or whatever. And it's at this point that these limiting beliefs must be dealt with. And they are dealt with really quite simply having established what is the limiting belief of let's say I don't deserve then I would ask, so what would you rather have in its place? And the obvious answer would be deserving, I'm deserving. So using the fact that you are spiritual religious, I would use what is called the Christ in me process, which really means putting Christ at arm's length, sitting facing you, and then introducing from the left, the I'm not deserving and from the right, I am deserving, bringing them together, intermeshing them, allowing Christ to do that so that the deserving part becomes much bigger than the other and becomes part of Christ and then Christ giving it to you. If you're the secular humanist, then instead of using Christ, you'd use the most important value you have of yourself and do the same process. But it's important to realize that the limiting beliefs must be dealt with before proceeding any further. And this applies to each of the uh, contexts that we're going to be discussing. So in the future, I will just refer to the fact that you have to take care of the resistance at this point. Now, what I'd like you to do then is to take a moment and outside of yourself, create Mm, let's say a big uh, movie screen or TV screen and put the values one at a time in there in a representation uh, that can be a realistic or it can be some form of spatial description, whatever your choice is. And when you've done that, let me know what you've done. Okay. Okay. So how have you uh, represented love? With the heart. Okay. And with independence? With a bubble. A bubble. Okay. And choice? With a coin. And with worth? With a dollar bill. And life's meaning? With a swan. I hadn't thought of that one, but that's good. So what I'd like you to do is to really visualize that 
and then step into that vision. Tell me what it's like, what you're aware of. I can tell all the five elements coming together. It's almost like I see a little sphere, you know, like connecting all these five parts and then it becomes a moving element, all five with each other. There's a lot of energy. It just simply feels good. Is the powerful energy of those spheres, is that when you say energy, is it calming energy or is it energetic energy? It's actually both. It is energetic, which works calming. Say that again. It's energetic, but calming? It's energetic, but that itself works calming. Oh, okay. It gives me an assurance which makes me calm. So the energy gives you assurance that makes you calm. Yes. All right. Excellent. So now this is the piece that we add for those that are religious and spiritual. So now add Christ to that and a vision. How does that change it? What are you aware of now? It's almost like an energy injection came to it. It's like the natural uh, value of energy right now. And I believe this is really possible. Um, I just thought about whether someone puts Christ into it or spiritual, because that energy definitely uh, comes, comes to play. Anything else? It's basically what I said before, David, but imagine it's like tenfold. Like what? Like it's tenfold, tenfold energy. Oh. Oh, okay. It's tenfold assurance. Okay. It's almost like whatever it is puts a seal on it. It's like before I believed and adding Christ or a spiritual element seals it and makes me know instead of belief. That's the best way to put it. So it's the uh, seal of approval from yes. Christ. Yes. So that you go from belief to knowing. Yes. Okay, good. That's great. Mm -hmm. So that, now what we need to do is to create the motivation that's going to be with you for the rest of your life. Okay. See, the, the problem with vision boards, first of all, is the creating the vision with all the bits and pieces. But the point is you can't carry it around with you. So this you've got with you all the time for the rest of your life. So the way we do that is, again, externally from yourself, but even a little bit further away, create another screen and put your vision in there together with an ideal self. So what's that like for you with the ideal self? It's corny to come from me, David, but it feels like a superpower. It's something invincible almost. Like, if I think about career, there is nothing that I wouldn't be able to do. What just comes to mind is what I set my eye on or what I want, I can achieve. Okay, so what I want, I can achieve. Yes. It's basically okay. limitless. It's what? It's limitless. Oh, yeah. And I believe that's what everyone wants to have added that uh, sure. ideal self. Yeah. So now... Into that ideal self, add Christ. Okay. How, how does that improve or alter or change it? Or what are you aware of now? It's basically similar to before when I added Christ or the spiritual element, the seal of approval from, you know, like, like imagine this, when you add the ideal self, it comes almost into a, I hope it is, I wish it is. And now it becomes the knowing again, the knowing part. So it's like it was with your, the original self that you have, yes. right? Okay, cool. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, a foreign entity comes mm -hmm. there and says, yeah, by the way, it is like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now what we're going to do is you've got yourself where you're sitting now with Christ, with the seal of approval. Certainly, further away from you, you have the ideal self with Christ, mm -hmm. vision. And between you and it is the goal of being in charge. Mm -hmm. So, looking at it from where you are now, you can see the goal 
and you can see the ideal self with Christ. Mm-hmm. What happens? Did you just ask a question? Sorry. Okay. You can see yourself now with Christ, okay, yes. and yeah. your vision. Yeah. And you can see the goal, what lies between yeah. you and the ideal self. Now what happens? I am in charge. I beg your pardon? I am in charge. Oh, okay. So what actually happened between those three elements? They became one. They became one in the center, meaning they met yes. in the middle and yes. engulfed and ascertained the goal. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. And that's done in the blink of an eye. Yes. But you need to be able to break it down to know that that's what happened. Right. It's important that you, you can have it done in the blink of an eye. The point is that while you're in the process of actually getting the goal, you've already gotten the goal. Yes. Yeah. And now, I really believe, I really believe without doing the resistance work first, yeah. now the resistance will kick in at latest. If you didn't, if you hadn't done it. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. That's I could a, not, I could not combine these three with the no, mouth of an eye. Exactly. Impossible. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Now the thing that I want you to do is having achieved the goal, make it yours by taking it into yourself now. Okay. And let it permeate you from the tip of your head to the tips of your toes. And tell me what you're aware of. Extremely powerful and now I know I am in charge and I feel in charge. So have you got any questions about this particular <clears throat> context or process? No, it actually makes sense. We've been working for quite some time together, so I can see more contextual uh, things right now. What I can say, I'm actually surprised. Like, it almost felt like, you know, when you, when you first introduced to me the, the, the five pieces um i believe i told you that for me it feels like like an armor and that is like the first piece i I could literally tell that i was like putting on this piece of armor 